come for a day trip out to Gundabuka National Park, about 50 kilometres south from Burke. We're going for a walk now up to some rock art. There's the path, fairly new. We're climbing up over the rocks. Haven't come across any art yet. It's a great little stone path they've placed here. A lot of work's gone into creating that. seems to be what's left of the old station fence. But it wasn't a national park. We'll be taking a walk to Bennett's Gorge to have a look at this magnificent scenery here. see if you're up the top of Mount Gundabuka, or kind of what you would see. You'd be looking down on it a bit more. We've come to the poet's night at Kidman Camp. I didn't have to cut the wood, did I? And Normie didn't have to cut the wood, and are you going to let me see your face? Yeah, hey, there's the happy camper. Yeah. He doesn't have to cook or cut the wood. I have to cook or cut the wood. Thanks for coming down. Uh, so my name's Andrew. Um, Andrew Hull, if you meet a bar class name, most people just call me Hully. Okay? As I said, the journey can take us anywhere, but it always starts in this one place. It always starts with this poem, which is called West, because it's a, a brief history of Western New South Wales. West was the chance for adventure and romance and a life that was not handed down, where the idealistic and the unrealistic could escape from rank and from renown, with the future unplanned, save for the hope of a land borderless and open and blessed. So men without fear gave up their kin and their career to rebuild themselves out in the West, and West was the break for the women to take and trade circumspection for a real chance. But hearts got broken when words unspoken were lost in this new circumstance. West was the space where respect earned its place, and men stuck to men as a creed, and those with the drive could prosper and thrive and could take over title and deed. And then here was a land where empires were planned, and fortunes that few could have guessed. So bridges got burnt and lessons went unlearned, as industry came out to the West. And then West was the story of power and of glory that the poets and the writers relay, and men took to the track carrying their lives on their back to go to where the future was being made and when there came a war, the West was the core of the spirit we considered to be the best. When 
far foreign fields, that concept was steel. As this nation was defined by the West. The West was the scene for seasons extreme, with plague and with drought and with flood, with panic so dry that they just blew to the sky to fall elsewhere as mud. So with the banks undecided, the big stations divided, and the returning men claimed their bequest. Most of them would lose out to the vermin in the drought, while the rest just blew away in the west. As west ran the courses of new market forces, while dreams were still finding their way, and schemes that were tried were more often denied, and so some were unable to stay. And many small towns of respect and renown were lost, save for a few dispossessed, who laugh as their sunset over doubts and regret, which is just how we laugh in the west. The West now is a trial of will and denial, and hopes that are shaken and shattered, and forgotten dreams that split at the seams, in hearts that are beaten and battered, but it still lives in the song for the sacred and strong who cling to the will in their breast, and who wait for their chance for adventure and romance that is still to be found out in the West. We couldn't leave Burke without visiting the Backer Burke Exhibition Centre and going to their Outback show. I was asked just to keep it to a few short clips, so here is just a bit of an overview of the show. when we came in. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Who would have thought they would have? <laughs> my name's Luke. This is my wonderful four-legged friend here, Alice. Isn't she gorgeous? Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. You sure about that? I hope that again, Dominic. I'll tell you what. God just killed a kitten. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> and just so that we, you know, yeah, this time you have to sit back down so and you can and speak with the dapple grace. And he pulled the front of his wagon out. And the splashing hooves and the driver's voice died softly away in the night. But some of them prayed of a shadowy form that guided the leader's reins. And some of them spoke of a shod black horse who pulled in the offside chains. How every time he lifted his feet, the wagon had grown and swing. And every time he lowered his head, you could hear the tug chains ring. Now Dan came through to the swagmans. Mud splattered from foot to head. You couldn't tell which of the roans were blue or which of the roans were red. Now this is a tale I've heard it told, and many believe that it's true. When the Teamsters say in their offhand way, it was the devil that pulled him through. Say hello, say hello, it'll be the usual terms and conditions. Who's got a couple hundred dollars here to start them away for us? Two hundred dollar bid here, right in the front row. Good on you, Dad. Two hundred dollars to start them. I got a bit of two twenty-five and fifty. At two hundred and fifty and seventy-five. At two seventy-five and three now. At three hundred and twenty-five. At three twenty-five dollar bid and four hundred. At four five here now. At four fifty. I got a bit of four hundred and fifty seventy-five. At four seventy-five now. At four seventy-five all by him. They're on them at five hundred. At five hundred and twenty-five. And again, and again, we saw the car you pulled up in. Now. These animals behind us here, ladies and gentlemen, these are bullocks. We know they're bullocks because bullocks don't have bollocks. 
back in the day, the bullock teams were used extensively throughout Australia. They were used for rolling mallee scrub. They were used for ploughing rabbit forests. They were used for snigging logs. They were used for shifting wool and shifting wheat and shifting shipwreck ships off reefs. This poem was written by a fella called Anon. And Anon wrote an unparalleled great string of absolute crackers. And uh, this is a poem that he wrote. I'll just tell you while we're getting crackers. It was in the drought of 82, and over hill and dell, no rain, the water far apart and dry and hot as hell. The wretched bullock teams drew up beside the water hole. They'd struggled on through days, dust and drought for days to reach this goal. And though the water rendered forth a rank, unholy stench, the bullocks and the bullockies drank deep, their thirst to quench. All right. The sun rays lit like a furnace fire. The sagging wool bales dipped and swung. The sand poured off the four-inch tyres and the dust upon the float rails clung. With lowered head and lolling tongue, the lead ox leant against the bow. With yoke that creaked and chain that rung with every step that lifted slow. Grim drought had bound the western land. The swamps were dry, the creeks were low. The team that dragged against across the sand laid wasted necks against the bow. Along the sand, a fangless snake. Though each ignored the starter's call, he could not flog for warrior's sake. And with a heart that must burst or break, he threw himself upon his knees. My God, upon me pity take, as I have taken none on these. Come on, Brian. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Move back, Rhea. Move back, Rhea. Move back, Rhea. Move back, Move back, Rhea. Whoa. Whoa. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back.